If you're looking for more Fire and Blood, we've got you covered in this deep dive into Episode 8's preview. If you haven't checked it out yet, I've left a link to it in the description, but please do come back, I'm lonelier than Aegon after 8 glasses of wine. Be warned, this video, unlike my episode breakdowns, is chock full of book spoilers. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. The title of this episode is Lord of the Tides, a reference to the head of House Valarian, and judging by this preview, the story will center around around who will become heir to Driftmark. Last episode, Rhaenys tried to convince her husband to name Bela as heir instead of their son Laenor, who would pass it on to Luke the Bastard, one not of true Valarian blood. But with Laenor now gone, Luke is one step closer to being heir. You may also ask yourself, how come it doesn't go to Jace? Well, that's because he'll be king, and it seems as though titles in Westeros work in a similar fashion to the British monarchy, meaning one can't take a lower title if they have one that's higher. For example, King Charles can't simultaneously be known as the Prince of Wales, even though it was a title he held for 64 years. Similarly, when Jace becomes king, he'll be referred to as such, and not as Lord of the Tides, so that title will fall to next in line, Luke. But as we'll see throughout this preview, there are others seeking to claim this title. Here we see a ship heading toward King's Landing. With that domed structure, it looks a lot like the royal ship we've seen Viserys and Rhaenyra utilize throughout the season. It seems as though the king is gravely ill, as Otto Hightower proclaims he speaks on behalf of the king. It was not uncommon for the hand to sit on the throne and perform the king's duties while a king was ill or indisposed. Perhaps this is what Rhaenyra means later on in the preview when the Hightowers have, quote, struck the first blow. With the title of Episode 9 being the Green Council, the name of the council put together after the death of the king to prop up King Aegon, it looks as though this or next episode will be King Viserys' last. From previous trailers, we do know the king does in fact die this season, leading to the Dance of Dragons, a bloody civil war. Here we get a shot of Rhaenyra in a black dress. If green is Alicent's color, then black certainly is Rhaenyra's. Behind her, we can definitely tell another jump has happened with her son Jace and now stepdaughter Bela several years older. And don't worry for those of you who find these time jumps really jolting, apparently this is the last one for some time. Another great shot of Rhaenyra in her black dress. The attention to detail here is amazing, with the fabric creating these dragon-like scales with hints of crimson. She looks a little concerned over what's transpired here in the throne room. I wouldn't be too happy either if a high tower was now claiming to speak speak on behalf of the king, especially if that king is in ill health. We already saw how Viserys forgetfully called Alicent Emma last episode. If his mental faculty has gotten worse, who knows how Otto could manipulate him. Here is a fantastic shot showcasing some of the old and new cast. In the back left is the ever-faithful sworn protector of Alicent, Sir Criston. Aegon is here doing his best Draco Malfoy, followed by Aemon, Helena, Alicent, and Otto. A few things to note here. Aegon would be next in line to the throne if Viserys hadn't named Rhaenyra heir. Aemond, having lost his eye in episode 7, showcases his sweet new eye patch. Helena, oddly enough, isn't holding on to any bugs. I wonder if she's been wed to Aegon yet, as was mentioned last episode. Now take a look at Alicent. Whether she's faking this sadness or not, we don't know, but it likely has to do with the severity of her husband's illness. Take a look at her green dress, also adorned with a quite visible Faith of the Seven a necklace. It makes perfect sense Alicent would lean into religion. Remember, it was a young Alicent who prayed with Rhaenyra in the earlier episodes. The Faith of the Seven is the dominant religion in Westeros, so it would look good in the eyes of the common folk, plus it's in line with her image of being this dutiful, law-abiding, self-sacrificing mother, a contrast to Rhaenyra who will be painted as the complete opposite. Notably absent here is Alicent and Viserys' fourth child, Daeron. I've heard that he won't appear in season one. In the book, he spends most of his youth in Old Town as cupbearer and squire to Alicent's cousin, Ormond Hightower. A close-up of Aegon and his brother Aemond behind him, I love this small green emeralds lining his necklace. I just hope he's grown out of his window phase. Another Faith of the Seven symbol atop the small council where Alicent sits in the king's seat. Alicent has attended small council meetings before, but now it looks as though she's leading them. It appears news has reached Dragonstone 
of the High Towers ruling in Viserys' name, and Rhaenyra can't let that happen. If you remember at the end of Episode 7, the traumatic events of that episode resulted in the High Towers going back to King's Landing and Rhaenyra and Daemon hunkering down on Dragonstone, where it's assumed they've remained during this time. I'm even wondering if that's the chamber of the painted table in the background here, where many of the war meetings on Dragonstone are held. A visibly older Daemon agrees with his wife. They are to make their way to King's Landing to make sure everything is on the up and up. Could that ship we saw at the beginning be Rhaenyra and Daemon's? It seems pretty empty, but maybe they took their dragons. Check out this creepy nighttime shot of what appears to be someone who has had their head bandaged in bed. My first thought was that this is King Viserys, however, since the next line refers to the sea snake being injured in battle, at the damned stepstones no less, I'm more inclined to think this is Corlys. We can make out a white-haired woman to the right, possibly his wife Rhaenys. Correction, since I started editing this video, I noticed the window designs here match those found in the king's chamber where he is dead. So unless they're the same design, this is likely Viserys. Now I also wonder if Viserys will die a natural death or if someone will give him a little push. The book offers two scenarios, one in which the king went for a nap and died in his sleep, and the other where Alicent gives the king some poison. If anyone were to give the king some poison, I'd argue it would be Rhaenys, as revenge for stealing her crown. Here appears to be a maester or surgeon preparing some surgical tools, when we find Rhaenys in front of dozens of candles. Whenever I think of many candles in Game of Thrones, I think of religion, so maybe she's praying to some sort of god or the gods for her husband's recovery. Someone who may not be praying for Corlys's recovery is his brother Vaymond. These two have fought a lot, and Vaymond knows that Luke, who's expected to be Lord of Driftmark, isn't a true Valarian. So it would make sense with Corlys potentially on his deathbed for Vaymond to come and claim Driftmark as his own. We'll later see him questioning Rhaenys, who sits on the Driftwood throne, asking who will sit on it when Corlys is gone. It looks as though training continues at King's Landing, where Sir Criston bashes Aemon's shield with a Morningstar, just like he did to Daemon in Episode 1. Overlooking the ominous and grim King's Landing, we have voiceover of a feeble-voiced Viserys, stating the crown cannot remain strong if the House of the Dragon is divided. The man is still holding on to hope that Alicent and Rhaenyra can patch things up and heal the rift between their families. Here we have Jace and Luke watching someone come through the front gates of the Red Keep. Someone will later find is Vaymond. Vaymond's arrival will undoubtedly cause more problems for many of our characters, especially if he starts questioning the strong boy's legitimacy to the throne when it pertains to Driftmark. Here we have Daemon clutching a piping hot dragon egg, but for whom could this egg be for? Maybe his daughter Reyna, who had Vagar snatched from her, or perhaps one of the three children he'll eventually have with Rhaenyra. I'm curious if this egg is discovered at the Dragon Pit or on Dragonstone. This looks like Jace to me, visibly upset, and with Aegon to his right, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the cause of this anger. A cloaked figure approaching Missaria, aka the White Worm. The last we saw of her, she ratted on Daemon to Otto Hightower about his secret night out with Rhaenyra. As far as we know, Daemon does not know it was her who did this. The cloak here suggests that this is Daemon. Could he be going back to her to cheat, or perhaps asking for a favor? She is well connected with spies, after all. It also looks like Masari is doing quite well for herself, neatly dressed and in an upscale home, a far cry from the prostitute she was in episode 1. Rhaenyra tells Daemon here that this is a trap. By going to King's Landing, there's definitely the potential for lots of traps. Here's Luke looking a little concerned, followed by Aemond pointing his sword saying nephews, of course referring to Jace and Luke. If episode 7 was Kitty Brawl, here we have Teen Brawl. Jace punches Aemond, but we can also see Luke and Aegon here and even a glimpse of Helena in the background. Aegon pushes Luke into the table and just check out the face of who I think is Reyna beside him. The preview ends with Otto telling whomever is in the king's seat at the small council, likely Alicent, that the threat of war looms. Because the next shot is of Vaymond's arrival in King's Landing, it implies that this may be where the threat comes from. However, I wouldn't be surprised if this threat of war is more in regards to the potential civil war on the horizon when the king dies and Rhaenyra's claim is threatened. I would imagine Vaymond would ally himself with the High Towers. He'd want Driftmark over the bastard Luke, and if Rhaenyra is on the throne, he'll never get it. It's also quite interesting to note here that Vaymond is accompanied into the Red Keep by High Towers tower soldiers, not the King's Landing Guard, adding further proof a high tower Vaymond alliance may be on the horizon. Whatever happens next, it seems to be heading to 
towards the Dance of Dragons, one of the bloodliest events Westeros has ever experienced. Thanks for watching everyone, be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment on what you think will happen next. And if you haven't seen my Episode 7 breakdown, be sure to check that out. For more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, where is he? Where is my grandson?